Benza Wachier. My name is Peter Thomas. I'm a full-time artist, illustrator, videographer. Today I'm going to show you some spray paint safety tips and uh, things that you should know before you pick up one of these cans of paint. Here we have a basic spray paint can, but I want you to know, we all know the parts. Here's the spray paint cap, you know, our body, our color indicator here. Um, I went ahead and cut this open so you could see the inside, how it works. And what usually happens when the cans are sitting for a while is the paint separates from the gas, or I should say propellant. Here you have a straw. The straw is actually what sucks up the paint when it's inside of the can. So the reason you shake it, there's a couple of uh, uh, marbles down here. So yeah, you shake it up so that the paint is not gummed up on the bottom because if the paint's gummed up on the bottom and you try to spray it, what happens is the paint gets stuck inside of the straw and then your can is clogged and it's basically useless from there. So you wanna make sure you shake, say five minutes if it's been sitting for a while, just to get it nice and mixed. And then you have your spray paint cap. Some people call them tips. So this is a cap that would come with the spray paint can. They're not thick, they're not thin, but they're also not very clean. Uh, this is a skinny cap, also called a skinny banana. A lot of the caps have nicknames, but it's a skinny cap, meaning you would do thinner lines for it. And this is a fat cap, also known as a pink dot. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the three. So if you're indoors, you always wanna have a respirator and gloves if you want, unless you wanna be scraping paint off your hands. If you're outdoors, you could get away with using a paper mask just for demonstration purposes so that you can hear me speak while I'm spraying because you wouldn't be able to hear me if I'm speaking like this. I'm going to not be wearing a mask, but you really should be wearing a mask. You want to give your can a good shake. When you put your spray paint cap on, you want to squeeze it like this with the nozzle facing outwards. And then when you put it on, keep it pointed away. Make sure it's not pointed at anybody. And you want to twist the can and your hand at the same time. And you just want to get it on there just enough. What you don't want to do is put it on lightly and then push down. The reason being is it might not be aware of which way it's spraying, but also you can also break the stem underneath the, uh, the cap. So doing it this way is the best way. And then I always give it a, a couple test sprays before I actually spray it. So what I have on here is the stop cap. And when you spray your can, you don't want to be too far because if you go too far, it's going to be really misty like that. But if you go too close, you're going to end up getting some drips. You could go close, but only if you go really quick like that. But that's something that kind of takes a little bit of practice. So these are some basic lines with the stock cap and you can see is the edges are pretty fuzzy. So what I'm going to do now is put on the skinny cap or skinny banana is some people call it. And this line here, you'll see a little bit cleaner edges. You can see the edges are not as fuzzy. This would be something you'd want to use for, uh, for, for finishing touches. This here, it might be an effect if you want something kind of glowing. Last but not least, we have the pink dot or fat cap. So make sure you point it away when you twist it on. Test spray. This one here, I'm gonna hold it a little bit further back just because it's a little bit uh, of a wider cap. And you get something like that. This would be something you'd wanna use if you're filling. Maybe a circle there. Maybe another circle. Maybe one more circle. You don't wanna to go too thick when you're spraying your paint, whether you're doing it on a canvas or a wall, if it gets too thick, like how these drips are, it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. If you look up here, this is uh, something I sprayed maybe a minute ago and it's already already dry, as opposed to, to this, which was really drippy and it's still, still wet. So I'm go back to my skinny cap on this black and do a couple of test sprays. Now, when you're spraying your can, you wanna look at where you're going and not so much where you're at. I know that sounds kind of weird, but if you're looking at where you're gonna go, your hand more or less follows through. 
something like that. To get a line that's kind of this, this clean might not be so easy. It kind of takes a little bit of practice to, to get lines. A little face. So let's say, let's say, uh, let's say I messed up and accidentally did a line like that. We can come back to that. We'll let this dry for a few minutes. I'll go on to the next one here. So again, when you're doing final lines, it's pretty much all about um, confidence. Uh, you just gotta be confident in, in the lines that you're gonna do. Because if you're not, what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up hesitating on stopping. You want the line to be one, one full, one full motion because if you stop along the way, you're gonna end up with some inconsistencies in your thickness and uh, just the overall uh, smoothness of it. Shadow. So now we're gonna come back to the happy face here. You are gonna mess up and make some mistakes, but it's always fixable when it comes to spray paint because it dries so quick. Now, I am using the same skinny cap. I'm gonna put it back on the yellow. The reason why I say give it a couple test sprays is if you go and spray it right away, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a little bit of color mixing, just like that. So that's why I, I always give it a couple of test sprays somewhere else. So now you can come back in here and you can go right over the the black and that's that's kind of the uh, the beauty of spray paint is it's it's really forgiving if you know how to work with it maybe I'll give these some quick cuts and this is called line cutting so what I did with the yellow here this is what you would call a fill and then what I did with the black you'd call the outline and then here I kind of gave it a shadow it you could either call it a shadow or or 3D, but here it's more of a shadow than 3D. So last but not least, what I'm gonna do is um, what we call a, a one shot. Some people call it the outer glow or force field. There's different ways people call it, but I like to call it a one shot. So with this, really important that you kind of do it in one full stroke. And you can see right here, because I stopped, now you can see where I stopped. So I'm gonna continue down here. And you want it to be more or less one, one full motion because if you, if you keep stopping like you're sketching, what's gonna happen is your lines aren't gonna be as smooth. You're gonna end up with, you're gonna end up with jagged edges, kind of like that. Um, not the end of the world if you end up with something like this. I could easily turn that into Let's say a bubble. I think we can do some other bubbles here just to make it all consistent. One last thing to mention, your can wants to be as upright as possible. Try to keep it this way. If you spray it upside down, your can might not work because then the paint is down here and the gas is up here. Other than that, just be mindful of where you're painting. You don't want to get paint on your clothes as well. So make sure you're in a well ventilated area if you're painting inside respirators. Um, I have a wide open door here with some open windows and that's pretty much it. So if you want to see more videos from other great artists, you can see them at impath.ca. My name is Peter Thomas and thanks for coming.